Power Tribe just got off stage, and we're gonna sit down with them for a second and find out what is new with them. Guys, from what I understand, this is your first interview? This is our first yes, interview, yeah. yes. Well, we talk to each other all the time. We just <laughs> never yeah, talk we together on interview. camera together. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah. So what's going on with you guys? Uh, new CD. New CD. It's all recorded, ready to go. New music. Yes. New music, yep. And we new played a bunch of that music tonight. Like first time, a couple yeah. of those songs, first time we've ever played them live together. On, ever. on stage. Mm -hmm. And that's because he lives here in Los LA. Angeles? And we live in Colorado. So we, whenever we do a show, we come out here and we just try it on stage. First time ever. <laughs> it's so cool. I heard you guys say this was Power Tribe 2.0. Explain that. Power Tribe, up to the CD that's going to come out, had been primarily an instrumental band. On um, him. I wrote a lot of instrumental music, yeah. and that was kind of the start of Power Tribe was instrumental. And got to the point where um, Missy's just got an incredible voice, and it just made sense to, you know, incorporate that and use every possible, every tool in the toolkit that we had, and do it on a CD. And this is kind of going back to the music that I grew up on. Um, I love like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and stuff like that was my favorite band. So just kind of coming to the realization of what kind of music do I really want to play and realizing that that was the music that I loved. It's like, why haven't I done this music? So now that's what we're doing. Well, the old stuff was fun. We just, you know, kind of played it for a few years and it was just felt like it was a good time to kind of make a transition, you know? Sure, absolutely. We, kind of like one of those been there, done that and what's yeah. next? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and I love the new material. Like, I love the the words and just adding that. But then having an instrumental song in between is... Oh, yeah, we didn't we didn't give up on the instrumental. Yeah, yeah we still <laughs> keep them there. We're going to be keeping those. Primarily vocal band. This was uh, definitely kind of power metal-ish in a way, the new stuff. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> I want to have a little weight to it. I mean, yeah. not this kind of. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, well, you, you also got. You, I mean, you came out with a Viking helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we did. We did come with a Viking helmet. <laughs> yeah, and I tried to do the the vibrato and. Well, and that's that the thing. Going. Missy's got so many. You know, her voice just does so many different things, and that's Missy and I have worked over the years on many, many different projects, and I know her voice. I know all the different voices she had, and so that's like when we're recording, it's like I'm like, oh, Missy could use this voice here this voice here this voice here so it's like it's fun you know to be able to utilize all of that into one project one project yeah, yeah. you know playing the rhythm guitars I like to play playing the solos I like to play hearing Missy you know sing the way the sing different like ways the guy. sing the different ways <laughs> that she can sing and then John just doing all the stuff that he wants to do he pretty much has free reign to do whatever he wants to do on the drum so it's just it's kind of open for everybody to just kind of do what they do the best we're even thinking of maybe a song here and there, adding some Cookie Monster vocal type, you know? The, the, the rough. We've been listening to Arch Enemy. Yeah, <laughs> I really like them. Oh my gosh, they're awesome. Okay, but what would make that cooler though is if he did it. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, he could do it. Don't give me a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. You could do it. You could do it. All right, so now you guys used to live here in LA and you moved out to Colorado. Mm -hmm. Why? You answer this one. Colorado was beautiful. Beautiful. The mountains are you know, beautiful. <laughs> I want us to say, I want us to say why say why we moved to Colorado because there are just lots of things going into that. But I will say as a result of moving to Colorado, it totally allowed us to realize and focus and uh, we were really isolated in Colorado. So there's not all the Los Angeles distractions. Yes. So without all the Los Angeles distractions, we were able to really focus on hey, what is the music we want to make? So I'll say that, you know, the music we're doing now pretty much is born out of having moved to Colorado. Yeah, keeping ourselves isolated allow us to focus on the actual music. And for me, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of free time driving or whatever where I really, in my mind, I was going through just things of, of life. And like, cause I, I mean, I've played blues, I've played every type of rock there is. Being there, I was like starting to get into jazz, right? I never really played jazz. Yeah, he started so was, getting really So I was jazz. really starting to get into jazz and like, you know, studying you and stuff. Really well, I was, I was, really I was getting an that. idea of how it's supposed to be. Having played all those genres and kind of coming full circle, it's like, what do I want to play? I can play all these things. What do I want to play? And coming back to square one, wow, I want to play metal. And I want to play metal with heavy John. metal vocals, <laughs> and John, and Missy. It all kind of just, you know, the focus really came together in Colorado. So John, uh, since you live here in LA, do you have a hard time preparing to play these songs live that you've never played before? Taking that one step back, it was really 
interesting in the, in the whole writing recording process. So when Darren reached out to me and said, hey, I want to do a new record. I'm like, okay, that sounds kind of fun. And he said, hey, I'm going to demo a few ideas, send them to you. And boom, he just sent me like a ton of stuff. I mean, he had like maybe like a program kind of drum machine in there. And there were really cool parts and he had some cool ideas. And then he gave me free reign to kind of do my thing with them. Then we went to the studio and recorded them. So, and then after he got my drum tracks, he kind of developed his guitar tracks more on top of that and, and laid Missy's vocals. So it, the whole thing organically kind of grew. So mm -hmm. the cool part when we play live, I felt like we, we built the songs together. Yes. I, I really feel like they're us. So, um, I don't know, they're, they're just kind of fun to play. I mean, it's a little challenging, I guess, you know, um, preparing for a show. It's like, I wish I could sit down and rehearse with them, but um, yeah. a couple of these songs tonight, the first time we ever played them ever together was right there on stage, so. <laughs> and, it's uh, so cool. It's just, it's great when he, like when he's doing some of his writing and then there's like something that he wrote, like an accent, I can't let go of that accent. I'm just like, I hear that accent. I've got to play that accent, you know? It's like, it's, it's so cool. Since you guys are in different places, are you in other projects here in LA? He's mega um, Yeah, well, they, they have some things going on in Colorado, and I also play with a couple of bands out here. Um, I play with a band called Edge of Paradise, and uh, I've got a couple other projects, uh, Final Gravity and Sin, and a couple of little things that rear their head every once in a while. So it's kind of fun to kind of, um, I don't know, play in like different worlds and... I don't know. Tonight was a lot He's of fun. He's multi-talented. <laughs> yep. Very versatile. Well, it's fun when we play together. I mean, it's always a good time. I'm serious. Every show we've ever played, like, I always like, feel, like, excited when we're done. I'm like, I just, I swear, even before we were sitting, we'd sit down to do this, I'm like, I want to play another show tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we totally want to. We want to take this music, we want to take it as far as we can take it, you know, but, and we're doing it the way that we're doing it at this point. You know, we're in separate locations right now. But we're doing the best that we can. You know, can. it's interesting. That, that sounds like it should be a challenge, but I don't know. Somehow, in a way, that kind of makes this kind of special, or it's got yeah. a unique thing to it. So I don't know. I it's not. Yeah. I, don't, I don't consider it a hindrance. I think it's kind of cool in yeah, a way. It's very cool. Yeah. Because yeah. we we don't get tired of each other. We never see each other. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get on stage. It's like, ah, oh, we're gonna play. Yeah, we're it's so like excited. excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> uh, tell me how you got started in guitar, how you got started in bass, and how you got started in drums, and then also tell me a little bit about your equipment. Guitar is easy, Ace Freely, Kiss. I was seven years old. I had older aunt who turned me on to Kiss Alive and I was immediately hooked on Kiss. Uh, literally, my grandma got me a guitar when I was eight. I didn't know how to play it, so I would literally lay on my bed, look at the pictures of Ace Freely on my wall, and I would put my fingers the same place where his was on his guitar, and I'd whack it, see if I could hear something. <laughs> and it never did. But, uh, but, uh, cause probably cause the guitar, I didn't know how to tune the guitar to begin with, but, uh, so, but Kiss got me into guitar, and I, you know, I love old Ted Nugent, I love new Ted Nugent, but old Ted Nugent stuff, and, uh, then got into, you know, I remember Iron Maiden, and Judas Priest, and bands like that, and just more into metal, and that's where my playing went. I was, uh, when I was 12, I had a cousin that was a year older and a cousin that was a year younger, and one played bass and sang, one played drums, and we were banned from the time I was 12. We were gigging when I was 12, uh, playing roller rinks and you know garage sales. I remember playing a flea market, and then that's kind of took off from there. Just kept kept going, haven't stopped. And then gear-wise, I'm I'm a old I love old Marshalls, so all the amps I use are some basic design of an old Marshall. Uh, Roy Blankenship builds all the amps that I play because he's just keyed into what makes those old Marshalls special. So I play amps that he builds kind of, you know, of perfect designs based off those old amps. Guitars, I'm using uh, Fender Strats right now. Um, that's pretty much it. I keep it pretty simple. All right, Missy. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually, my whole background is classical. So I was a classical pianist. Um, I started when I was about three years old and eventually I got to be known like a uh, like a child prodigy by the time that I was 12, 13, 14. I started going to college in order to play classical piano and then I got into, I minored in um, opera. So I do have an opera background. Um, however, I started to, were well, you asking me about the bass? What happened was I started singing and I started getting into rock and it was because of this guy. Um, it, it actually started where I heard some music and it was these bells that came in and the bells started ringing and this guy started singing and I was like oh, who is that because they were starting to sing hell's bells and something about hell's bells and I was like this is so great what is this and then 
Darren tells me, and you said, what is it? It's ACDC. ACDC, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I love this. I want to do this music. This is great. And it was because it was kind of classical. So I really, really liked that. And so we actually ended up, um, we were out here in L.A. in order to do this rock thing. And we ended up getting management and so forth. And ended up having a project called Freakin' Missy. And we had different bass players doing, you know, performing and trying to work with us. And we eventually had one bass player and he got deported. Another one, but we let them go. And, you know, it was just really hard to find a bass player. So I, I was finally like, okay, I'll just play bass because I've got keyboard background. And even though um, I didn't know how to play like in a box like, like this, I could tell from the linear movement of the bass from the piano. So I, I did enough, like I could do like at least ten, learn 10 songs, do a set like somewhere of all of our original stuff. And so I worked for about a month, started playing out, and I was like, I think this will work. I will try singing and playing bass. And so I did it more out of necessity, but um, I started to really, really like it. Now, as far as like my equipment, I'm still not up on equipment like I don't really know whole like he just like buy this I'm like okay I'll buy that and then <laughs> I'm still learning about sound I'm still learning a lot of things as far as like bass playing um, I I think I have a really good feel about the way that I play um, I can I love to rock I love that rock feeling the bass right now I've got is a what ESP LTD okay ESP LTD so now I'm trying this bass I really really like it and as far as like sound I like a nice big boomy, bottom, <laughs> gritty sound. <laughs> Hope that helps. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I know. I just play the songs, man. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I was starting to play drums. I started when I was a kid, and I, I started doing, like, you know, the little drum lessons and at a music store, and I kind of hated it. I thought it was boring, so I kind of started, and then I stopped. And then when it was in high school, they said, oh, it's cool to be in a band. So I'm like, well, yeah, I'm a drummer. So I started playing again. <laughs> and I guess that's why I get along so well with these guys, because I started liking Kiss. And I thought Peter Chris was the coolest guy in Kiss and wanted to be like him. So I started playing drums. But I ended up with some bands like Judas Priest and all that kind of stuff. And then went to my like, hair metal phase. And then I started listening to prog rock bands like Rush and Dream Theater and Porcupine Tree. And I still like modern stuff too. I listen to the radio and uh, XM Sirius Satellite Radio. I listen to Octane, and I love listening to new metal metal bands that come out. And and I'll listen to classical jazz and whatever. And I got to study a little bit. I went to Berklee College of Music for a summer oh, session in Boston, nice. and I studied at Drummers Collective in New York City. And um, and when I moved out here to LA, um, I played for a little while, and same deal. I, I I got sidetracked, and I stopped playing drums for about ten years. Didn't play at all missed it and the next thing you know I started on um, playing out again and it was through my playing out with one of my friends bands who was a mutual friend with oh. these guys yeah. we wound up sharing a, a couple a bunch of shows together mm -hmm. how yeah. I actually got to meet Darren and Missy and at one point they asked uh, hey can you fill in for us we need a drummer would you be our temp drummer and I think I've been your temp drummer for how many years now <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've temp been the, drummer. the temp drummer I think so. you got the gig <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah I have a lot of fun doing that and um, I, I like how I get a lot of freedom to kind of put my own stamp on the drum parts. And, and I really, I mean, I love Missy's vocals. Um, Darren's such an amazing guitarist. So, I mean, not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not just saying this. I mean, I have so much fun. Like when I'm playing in the band, I just think I got a front row seat to watch these guys play. So, um, that's, that's awesome. Cool. And, um, and uh, gear, I, um, I play pork pie drums and I play soul tone cymbals. Both of those companies are Southern California based companies. Although it's almost a lie because Soul Tone Symbols, the company's based here in, in Southern California, but they're handmade Turkish symbols. So they make them in Turkey, wow. uh, very similar to Zildjian. So I, I picked Pork Pie and um, Soul Tone specifically because they both sound awesome, but they're smaller esoteric companies that a lot of people haven't heard of and they're great products. And I always kind of like to be different. So I think I specifically put a little bit of effort into trying to put together um, a setup where I pick some weird sizes and some interesting colors for my drums and some interesting sounds and um, shapes for the cymbals just to kind of do something a little bit different. I don't want to be like everybody else. And I don't know, I think that that's maybe a power trap kind of thing. I don't know if we're like everybody else, are we? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think some so. Of those, some of those cymbals, so. man, sound amazing on the record. Some of those yeah. little kooky cymbals yeah. sound cool. amazing sure. man, on the CD. I really enjoyed well, those. That's a fun experiment. I think I've learned more about you. 
Yeah. And, and you too. Like, <laughs> we should talk we more. Should, yeah, we really should talk. We should have more interviews so we know we learn more about each other. Again. Tell me where people can f uh, find out more information about you guys and also where they can buy your albums. What albums do you guys have out? We're still working on that album. <laughs> we have a brand new one that we finished. Yes. So we that just hasn't finished been released it. yet. It has not been released yet and we're we're gonna have it eventually downloadable, but we do have powertribeband.com, which is our website, powertribeband.com. So eventually it will be start seen there, but you'll 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 have it everywhere, like iTunes, everything. It's gonna be Facebook. out there. Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Hit us up on Facebook, Power Tribe. Yeah. We actually have a shop on Facebook that has some really cool merch stuff. We got a good merch thing on Facebook, so we've got T-shirts and buttons and yeah, it's just Power Tribe. Well, we can tell them the name of the new record, even though it's not out there. It's oh, not yeah, a secret, yeah. right? Tell them the name. Prepare for battle. There you go. Power Prepare Tribe. For battle. Prepare yeah. for battle. And it'll be like ten songs. Yep. And we got another record too that we finished a while ago. It's out there. Yes, we have the live one, live yeah. with the UBG. Yeah. That's yeah. actually that's more of the instrumental stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah, we've got Power Tribe live with oh, the UBG. Power Tribe 1.0. Power Tribe 1.0. <laughs> <laughs> <Power Tribe 1. laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And yes. then, uh, and then there's um, we have the oh we have the Surf the Shark Power Tribe Surf the Shark CD. Yeah, that's and that's when we were 1.0. That's a little different. What's I mean, one? There's two vocal songs on one. Yeah, there's only two vocal yeah. songs. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll keep evolving. We'll keep changing. Uh, of course. The 2.0 is gonna have eight vocal songs and two, two instruments. Two instruments. Yeah. Yep. But hey, there's a lot of guitar on there. There's it's good stuff. Check it out. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Check it out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get it out. <laughs> well, how do you feel about social media? How do you feel about being in video? How do you feel about just just you know, advertising yourselves? I, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> uh, well, we're not hardcore marketers. Yeah, you know, you know, really. I, I, I think we're kind of really a little bit more focused on the music than the whole social media yeah. marketing and I mean we're, we're there we're on Facebook and all that stuff but at the we same point I don't think we put a lot of focus on that I we think we put hardly no focus on that to this point which I think with the new CD though we will we will I think with this really this found direction kind of and just digging the new material so much I feel more I personally feel more inspired to really push to get this out there more so than anything we've ever done before yeah so we're gonna spend like twelve thousand dollars on this publicist <laughs> I'm just joking <laughs> That that does all the social media. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn more, and do our best. You know. Yep. That's absolutely. All we can do. Yep. Uh, any parting words? Anything you want people to know? Anything you want to say to your fans out there? Yeah. Keep paying attention to us. Um, jo jo jump on board. Um, we seriously. I, I think that's why we were joking before and calling this like Power Tribe 2.0. I seriously think the best part is. I'm not only yet to come, we, we finished it. It's it's ready to go. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we're really excited about the new record and I cannot wait for everyone to hear it. And we're working on new songs. I mean, we've got five new songs yep. that we're working on. Oh, you so. weren't kidding. I yeah. was serious. Yeah, <laughs> literally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. But uh, yeah, just look for the new CD, man, and uh, we'll, we'll get it out there in every format possible, you know, Spotify, iTunes, just everything. We'll, we'll have it out there as much as we can, so just look for it. And we'll be touring, so we'll be coming to a city near you. There you go. Yeah. As long as it's LA. <laughs> <laughs> and we're honored to be the first to have our first interview with you. With Richard, <laughs> right on. <laughs>